It is with much gratitude that I now welcome to the stage the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Patricia DeStacy Harrison. I'm back. <laughs> Be very afraid. <laughs> Thank you, Manoush. Note to self is just amazing. And good morning, podcasters. First of all, I want to thank uh, Laura Walker and WNYC for inviting me to be part of Work It Too. But I have to be really honest, I barely survived Work It One. <laughs> I laughed, I cried, I held my breath. Um, really waiting to see how these stories were going to end. And wow, this was definitely not Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> but it was public media, so very alive and dynamic and more authentic than ever through the voices of women podcasters. And this was last year, so congratulations to Laura and all of you because you had already moved public media, public radio beyond what the Wall Street Journal just identified today as public radio's existential crisis. <laughs> Doesn't that sound important? <laughs> and the headline of this morning shouted, the most innovative people are doing podcasts. And of course, we knew that. But the real story is that the innovators are women. And some of them are at CPB, the Corporation of Public Broadcasting, and they came with me today. And the one thing you need to know about them is they support not only what you have been doing, but all the good stuff that you're going to do. CPB Vice President for Radio, Erica Pulley Hayes. <laughs> Vice President, Journalism, Joyce McDonald. Now, I haven't checked lately, but neither one of you has reported you're having an existential crisis. <laughs> no, no. And also Elise Garfrenkel from my office, who's, yep, Elise, whose main job is to make sure I really actually leave New York and go back to Washington, D.C. <laughs> because it is always so great for me to be back in my native land. Uh, New York City? Well, no. Actually, my native land is a galaxy over the bridge uh, known as Brooklyn, where my story <laughs> began. <laughs> now, I'm talking about the real Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Brooklyn of today, where everyone is making artisanal gluten-free cheese. <laughs> I'm talking about street Brooklyn, where even the four-year-olds had attitude <laughs> and wore black leather. And for some reason, they were all called Antony. <laughs> As in, Antony, get in here, I'll break your neck. Um, <laughs> there were no helicopter parents. Kids were told to go out and play and don't come back until you have a job. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, <laughs> the other thing you probably don't know is that Brooklyn is truly the original home of podcasting, little known fact. Of course, we didn't call it podcasting then. We called it telling our individual stories at decibel levels. <laughs> <laughs> Connecting in a real unvarnished way with whoever was in earshot. And in Brooklyn, of course, everyone was in earshot. Uh, close proximity on the subway in the candy store on the street. And women's voices were loud and clear they weren't softly modulated. I never heard softly modulated women's voices till I turned on NPR. <laughs> so I was really used to being surrounded by strong women who expressed themselves uh, constantly, 24-7. God forbid you didn't have an opinion about absolutely everything. Why do you think New Yorkers define conversation as talking and waiting to talk. <laughs> and growing up, my virtual podcasting experience was at its best on the subway. People actually not talking to one another, mostly at one another, 
and sometimes just spewing forth into the atmosphere. And many years ago, when I traveled on the BMT from Brooklyn to New York, the conversations I overheard were riveting. One woman to another, and I, I would think about them for many, many years, trying to figure out, what did that mean? Um, <laughs> I don't call it cheating. It's more like relationship building with someone who's not your spouse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or this one. This one really stands the test of time, unfortunately. I can't stand him. He has no personality, but he has a job, so we're getting engaged. <laughs> <laughs> and when the BMT broke down, which it frequently did, we all sat in the dark, and invariably someone would curse the mayor the governor, the city, the transportation system, the universe, and ultimately everybody else would tell him to shut up. <laughs> and then my real favorite, a young woman telling a man, if you don't get your hand off my behind and get off at the next stop, I'm making a citizen's arrest. <laughs> Actually, I was that young woman. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> And the word I used wasn't behind, but you know. <laughs> and he did get off at the next stop, which was a really good thing, because I had no idea what a citizen's arrest <laughs> really looked like. So when people ask me, Pat, you know, public media, public radio, two dope queens, all those F-bombs, where, where are we going here? And I tell them, one thing, we're not going in the direction of Downton Abbey. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be creating and listening to the stories and voices of the very challenging times in which we live. And these voices are all colors and tones. They are diverse in geography and point of view and class and race and gender. And what we are going to hear may not be best served with tea and biscuits, <laughs> but it will reflect the who of who we are. And I tell them, we have got to make room, we've got to move over, we've got to get out of the way so that these new voices can stumble and then perhaps self-correct and create a conversation for our time because we need a conversation for our time beyond the shouting that passes for conversation. And this means that CPB is going to fund initiatives to increase women's voices. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, incubating new talent through WNYC and public radio, investing in a strong network for women podcasters, bringing journalism to the podcast medium, help women be leaders in podcasting, and we're going to expand these great voices and stories so public media will be relevant in the lives that people are actually living now, today. And we're gonna do it with humor and with insight with compassion, a little outrage mixed in as well, because we need those authentic voices of our time. And no topic, no topic is off the table. Have you really listened to Jessica Williams and Phoebe Robinson lately? <laughs> I'm learning so much. <laughs> it may be too late. <laughs> All good. <laughs> And it's all great because women who have historically been the observers of history are now making history and talking about it. And last year, of course, we were very proud, very excited to support the first Women's Podcasting Festival through WNYC and the first three women-hosted podcasts, Only Human, Death, Sex, Plus Money, and Note to Self. And our grant this year is going to increase production of all three. So, <laughs> I remember uh, sitting right here for Work at One and all of these amazing stories and the talent on this stage 
And if someone had taken a, a photo, I think it would have looked like Edvard Munch's uh, painting The Scream. <laughs> because it was constant incoming. It was exhilarating, it was unsettling. But as I said before, all in a good way. It was dynamic, it wasn't stale. And I decided then that I was never going to miss work at two, three, four, <laughs> or more, because here's our secret goal. Well, it's not so secret because I'm talking to the world, but. Um, <laughs> Our goal, CPB's goal, is to sport nothing less than the world domination of women in <laughs> podcasting. <laughs> you think I jest. Um, <laughs> the democratization have, of technology has really made it possible for us to share our stories, celebrate and sympathize and connect to our humanity in this volatile world as we consider moral choices and challenges. So I thank each of you, everyone who is on the agenda for the last couple of days, from the Kitchen Sisters to Two Dope Queens, the voices of modern love, to the women we haven't even heard from yet. And I want to hear from you. I think in the next several years, people sitting here will be standing here. And it's going to be wonderful. So I want to thank you for moving us to a very exciting future for public radio. And it is a role that public radio must play in American life. And the one thing to remember is that you own it. You own public radio. You own it for less than $1.30 per taxpayer per year. And let's be honest, that is much less than what you would pay for artisanal gluten-free cheese in <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> So you can really look forward to CPB's continued support. I'm not going to ask you to invite me back next year. Just try to keep me away. And thank you, Laura Walker, for working it so well, working it too, again this year. Thank you, all of you.